I found an article ranking every single Stardew villager on how comfortable I would be asking them for drugs. This is the craziest article on Stardew Valley I have ever seen. And the most insane part, it starts at 45. They listed every single character. And today we're gonna be going through it. If Sebastian isn't number one or Penny isn't number one, I don't wanna hear about it. Life is peaceful in Stardew Valley too peaceful. Sometimes even the Star Drop Saloon won't be able to provide you the excitement you need. There's got to be a way to liven things up. Something fun. Someone in this godforsaken backwater town has to be holding, right? Here's a comprehensive breakdown of everyone in the valley and how likely they are to give you a hand. Number 45, Jazz. Come on guys, I'm not a monster. I wouldn't ask a child for drugs. Plus I don't know how to play the ukulele. <laughs> so it's not clear how I would manage the video. Apology video. God damn, hard drive's heading strong to begin with. Oh my God. I think there are people who are below Leo. I think Leo isn't 43. I think Leo's at least 40. Number 44, Vince. Look, I told you, I told you there were people who, were, who Leo was above. This is mostly a tie with the previous entrance. You don't want to bring the kids into this. I get it. The one thing that bumps it up a spot is that prob Vince probably wouldn't even understand what I meant. So he wouldn't be traumatized by this interaction. Sure as dad definitely gets high. What to deal with the PTSD? But I'm sure if he keeps it all in his room, I don't think about what Jazz has seen Shane get up to firsthand. What? What are Ken and Shane getting up to? My biggest question is what drugs are they? Since it's small town America, you'd think the most common one would be meth. Or are they talking about like marijuana? Because I really think it depends on which, what drugs we're talking about. Heroin? I'm going with Penny. Demetrius? Demetrius would be a fucking narc, dude. He'd be able to make it for you, but he would, he would be like, I'm going to the police instantly. Demetrius would try to persuade you that the world of contemplation was the only life worth living and that getting, abusing substances would risk degrading your rational mind. Dude, he's such a wet blanket, dude. Maru's probably out smoking joints with Sebastian and she's just like, I want to get away from dad. Number 42, Marnie. Do not ask Marnie for drugs. She's already noticed that someone has been stealing from her inventory, particularly her stock of ketamine. Obviously it's Shane, but she's not ready to admit that. If you give her an excuse to blame you, she's gonna contact the authorities. What authorities? There's no police in Stardew. Who's the police? This guy? Morris? Morris, beside you look just looking like a total narc. Jojima absolutely drugs their import drug tests their employees constantly when your farm fails and you're forced to turn that comically large work computer they'll automatically reject your application my farm won't fail because what do they think i've got growing in between the wheat dude the bouncer there are two types of bouncers one is your dealer and the other is this guy? No, see, I can't agree with this. I know he doesn't let you into the casino, but look at those sunglasses. You think those eyes aren't bloodshot? Wait, where the fuck is Leo? Where, where's Leo? This dude said, I'm not a monster. I wouldn't ask a child for drugs, but uh, apparently Leo doesn't count with that. Number 39, the governor. Obviously, it's not a great idea to ask the state's head boot for drugs. Disagree. How many Republicans do you think are snorting cocaine? I think our head of state's are the ones who are the most drugged up. Look at what he's wearing. He's practically wearing like a pimp outfit. Like, you're telling me this dude doesn't carry around baggies of stuff? This is going to be demonetized, isn't it? Number 38. Penny! I strongly disagree. It's always the ones that you least expect. I bet these people think drug dealers are like these like, uh, around the corner, scariest people you've ever seen, dodgy. No, drug dealers usually look like this. And can I just point out, 
Her favorite things are poppies. In addition to its colorful flavor, the poppy has culinary and medicinal uses. Yeah, the medicinal uses is heroin. Number 37, Robin. Robin has been on a construction site, so she's not gonna be shocked to the very thought of someone wanting to get high. Still, she's not going to have anything to give you. She won't lecture you like Demetrius would, but she'll hint to her kids that you're a shady character. I don't know, see they're putting Robin here, but I think Robin is cooler than like Christian military wife, Jody. 36, henchman. The henchman's probably got some like wacky interdimensional drugs that would just kill a human being. Marlin. I'm not saying that Marlin wouldn't have access to drugs, although he wouldn't be willing to distribute them, but both of these things are certainly true. However, the dude sells your own items back to you? This man would give you steroids. I think this is where Alex gets his uh, stash from because he wants the strongest adventurers to protect the valley. He's like, oh, drink this magic tonic that's going to help you on the mines. What do you think it is? The dwarf. It's implied that the dwarf has a pretty biolo different biological makeup than humans. Yeah, don't bring the dwarf into this. If the dwarf offered me something, I would politely accept, then flush it in the first chance I got. I don't think he's got anything bad, to be honest. Pam! At 33? You're joking! She lives in a trailer in the middle of nowhere in America! Look at her! You've got Jody higher than Pam? You are lying to yourself. She lives in the Walter White trailer, dude. Penny, we need to cook, Penny. <laughs> if I'm needing a good smoke up, I think Pam's the one I'm going to. And how is Leo higher than her? Of 32, Carolyn? Can't disagree with this one. Secrets run deep in this family. For instance, Carolyn doesn't even know her husband is working for Mr. Key. Key. Moving contraband all over stuff. It'd be easier if she did know. Then she'd finally have a good excuse to leave him. I actually can't disagree with that. I wouldn't. Carolyn would have been my first choice, but she does kind of fit like right down the middle. 31. Leo? What happened to. I'm not a monster. I wouldn't ask a child for drugs. But you've got Leo higher than Pam? <laughs> Leo is a child who was basically raised by birds? Are the birds supplying him with heroin? Maybe he gets tipsy off of fermented berry juice occasionally, but that's about it. He doesn't have anything for you? Why is he so high? 30, Maru, I would never try- George at 29. The implication that George is at 29 is that Evelyn is also on this list? and Evelyn is in the top 30. I personally think George needs something to get the pain off, you know? Evelyn bakes him a few special cookies now and then, you know what I mean? First of all, George is just really mean. That's not a vibe I'm trying to connect with. Also, since he keeps posting quests for random items to re relieve his various aches and pains, uh, I doubt Harvey has been giving him the good stuff at the clinic. Okay, that's a good argument against my point. If he is always asking for stuff, that is a that's a good argument. I do appreciate that. Gus, that's crazy. Gus prides himself on running a clean bar, despite the fact that Sebastian is literally dealing in the pool room. That is true. If you're after alcohol, then yeah. Obviously, Gus is the guy to see. If you ask for anything else, you'll get kicked out. I think Gus probably worked a few dive bars in his life. Like, I don't know if older Gus would be the one to get you drugs. But if you were to hit up 27 year old Gus, you'd probably get the cleanest shit in America. 26, Evelyn? Evelyn is an old hippie from way back, but she doesn't want anyone to know that. She literally wouldn't be able to take Georgia's shit every day if she weren't high. That's what I'm saying. I totally agree with this. Evelyn has to be drugged out of her mind to make the pain of her relationship go away. She would be like, oh, Georgia's acting up again, time for the Time for my cookies! <laughs> 25, Sam. Sam was straight edge until the day he turned 21. He dr What? No way, dude. He drinks now, but hasn't experimented any further. Honestly, he still feels a bit guilty about the drinking, but there is no way Sam, the guitar player in a band with Sebastian, skateboarder, hasn't done any drugs. He's best friends with the goth chick and Sebastian who had a bong in his room. Clint? The, the, this is wrong. Clint tried weed once and it gave him a panic attack. That I could see. Grandpa? <laughs> 
So most people wouldn't ask their dead grandfather for drugs. <laughs> but this is the guy who wrote you that whole heartfelt letter about escaping the rush of modern world and returning to a simpler life. Grandpa and Evelyn definitely ran together in their hippie days. I've always had that personal theory that back in the day, Grandpa and Evelyn were like, you know, George didn't do it for Evelyn. 22, wizard. You would think that a wizard could hook you up with some truly cosmic shit. But you should avoid this option if all possible. All he has is that weird hallucinogenic tea that he brews in this giant cauldron. And it mostly just makes you shit your brains out. I think the wizard is Emily's dealer. Where do you think Emily gets her good hallucinogenic shit from? This man, Willie. Don't bug Willie. He just wants you to fish and hang out with Clint at the bar. It's not like he would actually have any drugs on him anyway. How was he higher than the wizard then? Switchies around. Lewis. Lewis will happily reminisce about toking up with your grandpa. Knew it. Lewis, Evelyn, and grandpa, they ran together in the hippie days. I'm telling you, he's not going to cause you any trouble, but the stories he tells you will take up your whole evening. You're not going to bed sober tonight? So when do they actually start giving us drugs? Because all of these people are still sober. Sandy? Sandy definitely has stuff, dude. You don't think she has a little bit of a cactus juice in the back? Sandy will not sell you anything illegal. She will, however, look suggestively in the direction of Mr. Q's casino and say something like, I have no idea where you find anything like that. Yeah, and then the bouncer gets you the good stuff. Haley at 18? Haley isn't the kind of person who has drugs. She just shows up to places where there are drugs. That's pretty true. Haley won't have it, but she definitely will try to steal some from you. Alex, there's a decent chance that Alex could hook you up or at least direct you to someone who could. The thing I'm worried is that he's a promising young athlete. What if I accidentally in introduce him to drugs and he spirals out of control? I don't want to be a footnote on a 30 for 30 about how Alex could have been a star and that he not died tragically young. What? That took a turn. 16, Gunther. Now this is a man I would get my drugs from. Gunther may not seem the type to imbibe, but he personally tests the pharmacological attributes of every mineral you donate. He's like, yeah, maybe me and Cecily later this rock, we could do a little bit of a father-daughter bonding time. There's not a very smart thing to do, but it's never actually gotten him high. But at least he won't be judgy when you ask if he's got any molly. We're in the final 15 chat. Who is our top three? I'm going Harvey at number three, Sebastian at number two, and Emily at number one. I'm going Leah as fifth, and I'm going Abby as fourth. If Leah isn't top five, I'm gonna be so mad. Number 15, Shane, stealing from Marnie's ketamine. <laughs> if you're really desperate and on good terms with Shane, then yeah, he can help you out. You absolutely will not have a good time doing it because he's not really the kind of guy who would just give. He will share. You'll have to spend a few hours with this miserable son of a bitch, watching him slowly destroy himself and wondering if he will ever someday share his fate. I can't disagree, dude. It's gotta be the most depressing goddamn smoke circle ever. Professor Snail? The guy got himself trapped in a cave full of mushrooms. Gee, wonder how he became disorientated? He does kind of look like a weed wizard. Kent? Military service Christian Yoba fearing Kent? Are you kidding me? Kent may have come home safe from the war, but he is still metaphorically waging inside of him. The only thing that quells the toral within is a nice indica strain, and Kent really goes more than an hour or two without packing a bowl. He'll happily smoke at you up, but there's like a one in five chance that you're going to hear some really fucked up shit about how many people he's killed. I can understand the, the medicinal PTSD, you know, for the PTSD, but I don't see it with Ken. He just wants to fish. Also, nightmare blunt rotation, Ken and Shane. Where's Jody? I don't, where's his wife? There is no way that Yoba fearing housewife, military wife Jody is in the top 12. 12, Linus. Now, this is a boy that I expected. Linus is going to get you that homegrown, straight from the forest good shit. It's going to be like it's straight out of the 60s, dude. It's going to be covered in leaves, but it's going to be the craziest stuff you've ever smoked. Not that I would know. I'm a good family friendly content creator here. Linus doesn't have anything for you. No, what? He had a really bad reaction to some anti-anxiety medication a few years ago. What? Like scary bad ever since he has sworn off any mind-altering substances? 
with an exception of a bear every now and then. I just put him this high on the list because you should really make time to visit Linus. He doesn't have anyone. What? This is an insane take, dude. This is this is the worst take yet. Linus definitely has his own stash growing somewhere in Cindersap Forest or up in the mountains. And if you go visit him around that campfire at night, he's giving you like a whole bunch of it. Where do you think Seb gets his goods from? You know, he's not walking to town for that. He's going up into the mountains. Number 11, Jody. Oh, come on, bro. There is no chance. There is no chance, dude. Jody actually grows her own weed, but follows the state guidelines for personal use very strictly. There's still plenty to share, but she doesn't want her kids to find out she's growing. So you have to be subtle. Also, when Ken is home, he ends up smoking most of it anyway. This is the fattest owl that, okay. Can I just point out, Carolyn has a tea house. Do you think Carolyn, do you think this is, do you think this is tea? Does this look like tea? Do you think she hides in this room from Pierre? to drink tea? No, dude. Her and Abigail going in here to put up with his shit. Jody has her own stash? What do you think this is for Carolyn, bro? I can't believe they put good Christian housewife Jody this high up and Carolyn in the 30s. Top 10, Harvey? The crooked doctor, number 10. This dude broke the Geneva Convention and you think he's not willing to deal out the back door? This is a top three man, if anything. We all know that Harvey is crooked. If he wants something, he'll write your prescription. Oh sure, farmers need 80 milligrams of Adderall a day. The only reason he's not higher in the list is because he's definitely worsened the Valley's opiate problem by over-prescribing over them. Number nine, Crowbear. <laughs> You could get some otherworldly shit from Krovis, and I mean that in a literal sense. No, dude. He could hook you up with that stuff that will let you commune with Yoba. That's gonna be crazy. That'd send you into another dimension, bro. Emily? Emily at number eight? What? That's so high for her. Emily is high for every shift she works at the saloon. Yes, girly, get it. She also does shrooms sometimes when she's making clothes because she says it helps with her experience the textures of fabric better. She would definitely be down to trip with you. Number eight, every time you talk to her, she's in the fourth dimension. This is literally one of Emily's cutscenes. She's talking to interdimensional beings. She be, should be willing to share. God, that means Elliot's higher than her. Leah at number seven. Yeah, Leah is cool, understatement of the year. No surprises there. She's pretty much always stoned while she does her art and her mushroom hunts in the woods aren't just for culinary purposes. She's definitely on the chill side. So if you're looking for something that you'll get your heart rate up, she's not your girl. She's such a, like, how do you think she gets, okay, you have to be stoned to understand this because this makes no sense. What is this? It's just a circle. The only people in the valley who can actually appreciate this art is Leah and Emily. One of the statues that she builds is literally just two guys jumping on each other's heads. You're gonna be in another dimension to come up with that. Number six. Abigail. This one is pretty obvious. Her parents are worried about her alternative lifestyle. She's into the occult. She spends a weird amount of time looking for frogs in the rain. Abigail can hook you up with the stuff you've never heard of. Just be prepared for a wow profoundly weird hangover. Uh, is it six? Elliot is higher than her? There is no chance, bro. Pierre is higher than her? Her dad? Sebastian at number five. Sebastian self-medicates a lot. He, nothing has actually made him feel better, but he keeps trying nonetheless. He recently started dealing on the side in a misguided attempt to rebel against his parents. He'll smoke you up, but he'll have to sit and listen to him babble about his philosophical nonsense and whine about his stepdad. He had a bong. This is, it's the, it's literally the biggest indication. He canonically does drugs. Canon quote from Robin. I found an ashtray in Sebastian's room and it smelled really weird. Should I be worried about this? Canon quote from Robin. Let's go to number four. Elliot, an aspiring novelist who lives in a beach cabin and spends a good amount of time on the bar. Yeah, this guy's got coke. I mean, yeah, okay, the coke I can understand. This guy's definitely got the, I think he's definitely hit the slopes a few times in his life. Wait, so who's left? You've got Pierre, Lewis, and Birdie? 100% Birdie is top three. Pierre and Lewis? We already did Lewis? 
Oh, Mr. Key? Number three, Mr. Key. Oh. Mr. Key is a solid option as long as you keep the interaction short. His operation is big enough that you know what we're getting is safe, but he will try to group you into dealing for him. What? He'll make it sound easy, but trust me, you need to make up some excuse of why you can't do it. You know what? You're not going to get in the red with Mr. Key. Mr. Key's running a black market? Drug Lord? Cartel? That's crazy, dude. But that means the top two are Bertie and Pierre. Bertie lives in a hut on an island. She teaches you how to make little fairy dust. I think Bertie is cool. Bertie at number two, I can see. That's totally fair. I think she's got some good stuff she grows. Pierre at number one. You think Pierre is making a living off of running a general store in a town with a couple dozen people? Get real. This guy is moving literal tons of products. Sure, he doesn't usually sell at retail, but have no choice but to sell you if you reveal that you're wise to a secret operation. His wife and daughter don't even know. They can never know. Pierre has drugs. That can't be disagreed with. But you know what happens when you find Pierre's drugs? He gets mad at you. Do you think this man is sharing when he says, give it back to me? When you find his drugs? No chance, dude. Pierre at number one is an absolute scam. Elliot at number four above Seb and Abby and Leah and Emily. We all know who the true drug kingpin of Stardew Valley is. He literally deals out of an abandoned house. The hats are a cover-up, and you can't tell me otherwise. Is that not the face of a drug kingpin?